So we go back to the origins of the 12 to Berlin in 1979, where it all started. Our director and DOP both thought that it would be a rather beautiful sort of stylistic device to shoot those sections in black and white. I thought it was a brilliant idea. It felt reportage, it just felt right for the period. The locations department found this great set, empty and a bit flat and boring. Oh, how are we gonna make this look interesting? When I arrived on the recce, it really wasn't what I was expecting. It was just a bit of a shell of a building. But Lucienne had done a fantastic job of recreating that 1970s Berlin feel. We gave a backstory to the squat, so we decided it would be an old radio valve factory. The guys did amazing packaging for radio valves, work posters, protest banners. So it had layers of what it was and what it now is. So very early on in the series, a new and very important character is introduced, and that's the character of Pam. Pam, played by the amazing Angela Vassan, really is an assassin who's been picked too soon. She is a new assassin for Constantine. He never worked with one like her before. She's kind of an every woman character. You'll watch her and you would think, in a different life, that could be me. So it's nice to see the paternal side of Constantine. I was supposed to be here for four episodes, and it became like four seasons. And I've been so pleased every time Sally and Lee could call me and say, we are so happy to tell you that Constantine is still alive. We were meant to kill him in season one, and we didn't because he was so amazing, and he kept nearly dying. He never has died. OK, you know, he's a cat with nine lives. At what point, if ever, are those nine lives going to run out? It has been fun doing Constantine to create him with the team. Even if we are in this horrible world, we have a very good relationship with Villanelle. She was the one who gave him happiness and fun and believed that we could survive everything. The journey is actually just down. <laughs> I'm starting here with Jody, all this beautiful and fun, and then just down, 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 losing everything. Well. As life. Everybody's benefited from having a little bit of Kim in their lives. What Lee and Sally did from the beginning, that they were so good parents, that we all felt like one big family. This home cooking way of being together, it creates a world that, of course, will be missed. But I think it's better to miss something rather than have nothing to miss. I'm looking just forward to miss something very beautiful. In Killing Eve, there's an ambiguity. The ambiguity of not necessarily knowing everything about everyone all the time. And I think Carolyn was at her driest, most oblique, most mysterious in the first season. But in season three, you know, her son gets killed. And that was really terrible and actually very hard to play because I wasn't sure that Carolyn had any access to those emotions. Kenny's death had a profound effect on her, but the interesting thing is that I think we look at whether the death of Kenny and her drive to discover who was really behind it also allows her to explore this world that she is addicted to. What she enjoys is the sort of spycraft game that she finds herself in. She's had to sacrifice so many things for that game. Karen discovers that loss is the thing that humanizes you, and I think that's a very good thing that's happened, is that her brain is not the only part of her life that matters. I would say that Sandra's Eve is a huge part of how Carolyn became Carolyn. And we've often begun the beginning of a series together, and I've always found that a great relief. We often sort of meet first, and that's really good. Her relationship with Eve, I think, is brilliant because they sort of get each other, but at the same time, they don't desperately like each other. This last series, we really explore, I think, Carolyn's morality and really what her true character is and what she represents. Carolyn really plugs into some of the history of 20th century spies. The way in which Carolyn behaves actually is something to do with the Cold War, which, you know, finished in the 60s, certainly when the war came down. It's as if Carolyn has always been the same age, all through the 70s, all through the 80s, all through the 90s, and now dragged into the 21st century. So there's something unreal, almost magical about her. I think I've discovered her as we've gone along rather than knowing who she is. I mean, that's the lovely thing about these journeys, that you're just the boat on which the story sails. You know, you're not at the end point ever. She goes on living, you know, in my head. Carolyn means a lot to me because I've got to know her so well. I really like her. 
I'm a less organized person. I'm uh, certainly not able to see four steps ahead, but Caroline can. So maybe that's been one of the hugest pleasures playing somebody who has all the gifts that I don't quite have. It's a slightly different music Caroline plays, and I've really enjoyed that. Honestly, I remember a lunch with Fiona in Romania, and it was just fantastic. Fiona has become a really deep and dear friend over the season. She's an extraordinary, multifaceted, brilliant human being who is full of charm, innate talent. And to think that she may not have come into our lives if we hadn't cast her, she may not have come into my life if we hadn't cast her on Killing Eve is, you know, that's one of the major things I'm going to take away from this process was Fiona. I've been in some wonderful shows in my life, but in the end, it's only a handful that you really miss. And this is going to be one of them. We have a really good time coming up with methods of killing. We've got some really inventive ones this season. <laughs> oh, I have a great weapon this season. <laughs> it's really brutal. <laughs> the prop guy was holding the hose at my face with the water, and Sam, the first AD, was like messing the water up, so it was all splashing all over me. And we had one take at that because everything got drenched. There's a kill in episode four, which involves a... Cheese wire. That's probably my favorite one. <laughs> Do you think I would kill you, Eve? Yes. When coming up with a kill, normally we think along character lines first. Lots of time it comes from the characters and where they are in themselves at that point. I want to be normal. Are you sure? The boy in the hospital was... That was a good one. It was a good one, and it was also, like, really treading the line. Like, I remember when we were doing it, and we were like, oh, my God, this is just brutal. But you can make sense as to why she chose to do it, and I think that was always really important, was, like, as long as it makes sense okay. to the story and the character, then it's then it's OK. Sometimes we just do, a, like, a brainstorm, and everyone brings in a new method of death, and sometimes we just do a big Google. <laughs> I think probably one of my favourites is... Hmm. <laughs> you know where to begin? I like it when it's not a knife or a gun or it's something a little bit creative, which I think was the Villanelle, which we always knew. We're always on the lookout for memorable kills throughout the series. Like how people remember, say, the murder of Bill in season one. That feels like an iconic moment. <laughs> It was also the beginning of like this character who you settle in with mm. that you think is absolutely going to be there and mm. suddenly snatched away. I know, it's mainly my fault, actually. <laughs> I didn't really think I can answer this question because it's all because of me. Thank you. I always get to come to set and do the most outrageous things. Have a laugh and kind of lose yourself in that, you know? It's so freeing to be able to do that. So I'm so grateful to this series and to her for, for that opportunity. So uh, what happens now? It'll lead you to salvation. Do they know that they're funny? Phoebe Waller-Bridge said that they do. So I think the fact that nobody else knows whether Carolyn knows that she's funny, but Carolyn knows she's funny. The character of Gunn, played by Marie-Sophie Ferdin, she comes as a real match to Villanelle and a real threat to Eve. And it was great working with Marie-Sophie. We really had a lot of physical scenes. I would always tell her, it's like, you don't have to run so fast. I know you're running after me. Don't worry about it. It's not going to be that much of a challenge. When we saw her audition tape, we just knew that she was the right person. We were really excited by the idea of having a character who was as much of a psychopath, if not more of a psychopath, than Villanelle. Marie was like literally walking down this huge hill with a live sheep on her back that was, like, kicking. <laughs> she was just like, oh, it's peeing on me. But it's beautiful. And I think it was the sexiest thing I've ever seen. Everyone was just kind of like, oh, my God, this is, like, magical. We loved the idea that when Gunn is walking towards Villanelle, you're not sure what Villanelle's going to do. She's either going to fall instantly in love or she's going to kill that person. Or it'll be a bit of both. Would you say that, like, your killings are messed up, or is it something that's more personal that Villanelle has done that was messed up? Oh, I don't know. I guess you know, killing her and her, famil her family. Yeah, yeah, sure, that is. That's that was kind of messed up. Shooting in Berlin was my favorite because it was also, 
like my favorite kill. Yeah, Bill was a good one. So unexpected. It was also the beginning of like this character who you settle in with that you think is absolutely going to be there. And then they're gone. Yeah, you kill and then them. they're gone. Then you kill them. I know, it's mainly my fault, actually. I didn't really <laughs> think I could answer this question because it's all because of me. Mainly. But you killed Raymond. Sorry. <laughs> There's something about that time in Berlin I thought that was really weird. And you were also out clubbing every night. That's true. We couldn't keep her in. It was crazy. <laughs> <laughs>